Hi, it's Mike. Welcome to my channel. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day today. Uh, to start this year off right, I'm going to do a small build series on how to build a one watt guitar tube amplifier from scratch. I've been building guitar amplifiers and tube amplifiers for about 20 years now. And as a matter of fact, my two most recent builds is a Tweed Deluxe and a Tweed Super here. And I've aged this one to make it look like it's been in a, a bar for a long period of time. When I started building guitar amplifiers, uh, kits weren't really around and you had to kind of source everything out. YouTube channels and pages and, and websites just weren't around. To, to learn how to do anything. And I actually got inspiration from uh, this book here. I found this book back in the late 90s and I stumbled across page 13 and there was a schematic here of a Fender Champ. And I thought to myself, hmm, is that all what it is? And so I did some research and I did some more reading and I talked to some people who are into ham radios and I figured out, yeah, I think I can build this. I did a previous video on how to debug and repair a Blackstar HT5R and you can take a look at it right here. That actual amplifier actually sounded pretty good to me. Um, for a one watt, it was pretty loud. And it was a really good practice amplifier. I didn't care for all the circuitry in there, but the amp itself was uh, quite um, reasonable for volume and tone. So that led me to my build series video here where I'm going to actually go through the whole process of how to scratch build a one watt amplifier. The amplifier design is going to be fairly basic. I'm going to base it on a Fender Princeton uh, front end section. So I'm going to use a 12AX7 out of a Fender Princeton that which just has a volume and tone. And as a matter of fact, that this is the, the first uh, guitar amplifier I ever built like over 20 years ago. Um, I really like that tone. It's a simple circuit to build. And then what we're also going to do is do a 12BH7 output section for a, a self split kind of um, a quasi push pull system and in that application should generate about one watt of power which I think for practicing and getting that real tube saturation sound is going to be pretty ideal similar to the black star amp that um, a lot of people like to use we're going to do a full complete build document here so I'll be doing the proper schematic uh, the proper layout of all the parts I use once the amplifier is completed and all tested and I'll be linking that in the comment section below so you can actually download yourself and if you want to build something like this you're more than welcome to so please leave a comment uh, like this video and hit the bell icon so when I produce another video you get notified and you can kind of follow along. So let's get into the build. We're going to build our own chassis from scratch. Um, it's going to look something similar to this. This is another build I'm working on. So what I've done is I got some 18 gauge sheet metal and I got them to shear it up at the metal store for me. So it's 11 and a half by six and a half and then the sides are two inches tall. So for the eyelet board I got a piece of phenolic from an industrial plastic supply store and so this is three inches wide and then I got some eyelets here. So these are just your standard eyelets and it comes with a tool to press them in. So once we have our layout all figured out we'll drill the holes and we'll press the eyelets in. So the power transformer here is just a standard allied electronics power transformer that I got online. For the output transformer, we're going to be using Hammond Manufacturers 125A. This is kind of a unique transformer since it has multi-taps. So you can uh, match the primary impedance with the uh, speaker impedance there. So you get a perfect um, ratio there for the transformer. And it's just a cute little guy. It's a neat little transformer. It has um, the taps on the side here and then it has the, the primary input here and this is, will be wired in a push-pull application. 12AX7 for the input tube and then the 12BH7 for the output tube. Um, these tubes are kind of similar. They're dual triodes in one bottle. That makes it very useful for our small amplifier application. Tube sockets. So these are one meg pots we're going to put into the circuit. Tone and volume. So we don't have to make a custom faceplate. We can just put those right on. Impedance selector. So we'll be able to uh, match our speaker impedance to whatever cabinet we're going to be running in. Our power switch. Negative feedback switch that we're going to put on the back so we can control that and I'll show you what that's all about. Pilot light, input jack, and we have our output jack, fuse holder, and our AC adapter out the back for the cord. So that's pretty much the major components we're going to be using for the chassis. And then when it comes to the actual electronics, I'll break that down further in the next video of the capacitors and resistors and the, the actual circuitry on the board. So as for the schematic, here's just a brief overview of what we're going to do. And once it's all finalized, I will put a proper schematic and layout in the description below and you can download that. And on a high level, what we're going to do is we're going to use the preamp section here and we're going to utilize the negative feedback loop 
there for that and we'll put a switch on that so we can toggle that on and off. We're not going to use a 6v6 and we're not going to use the rectifier tube. We're going to go with solid state rectification and we're going to use the 12BH7 here. So it'll be something similar to this, but we will tweak the values to make it work for the tubes we're using. Okay, now let's do our component layout. The one thing I should mention is if you don't want to build your own uh, chassis, but what you can do is put this into a Hammond box. And what I'll do is I'll find the appropriate Hammond box and put a link in the description of what will work. This is the power transformer and the black wires is the incoming AC line voltage. So we'll put that over here and we'll put our jack in the back here. So the output transformer. Now ideally it would be nice to have the output transformer as far away as you can from the actual power transformer because you don't want them to couple. So the worst thing you can do is actually put them in parallel with each other so the electromagnetic field around this would actually couple with this one. So you always want your power transformer and your output transformer to be 90 degrees from each other. The fuse holder there, that looks good. And we'll put our power tube socket somewhere around here. Put our preamp tube around here. Our input jack here farthest away from everything else so it doesn't induce any type of sound. We're going to have our negative feedback switch. We'll put it back here so we can turn that on and off to get a grittier sound. So we'll have our ohm selector for our speaker um, probably there and then we'll have an output here something like that. So of course these will be on the back wall of the amplifier. So we're going to have our pots here so we'll have our volume and tone. This will be mounted on the front wall of the chassis. We'll have our pilot light and then we'll have our switch over here. So that would be the general layout. So I now have the chassis, all the holes, the front and back panel all drilled out. And now I'm going to weld it up. So the welding's all done here. So all I did was TIG weld all around the corners here, kind of just did some butt welds. What I'll do now is I'll punch the holes for the tube sockets and for the transformers as well. I will grind over all the welds here, make it nice and smooth, then I'll give it a shot of paint and then be ready for assembly. So the chassis is all completed and the paint is cured. It turned out pretty good, I'm pretty happy with it. So what I'm gonna do now is put all the components on it. What I've also done was I inserted some 10 by 24 threaded inserts there so uh, I can actually mount it on a piece of board or perhaps make an enclosure for it. We also got the finalized schematic so we know what all the values are gonna be and what the voltages should be. I've done a crude layout as well of the amplifier design and I'll, once the amplifier is up and running, I'll do a proper one to look, make it look professional for you. And we're ready to go with the actual eyelet board. So we transferred all the holes and all the measurements over onto this. So what we'll do is we will drill all the holes out and we'll press the eyelets in and then we can start wiring up all the components. So I got a new pack of eyelets here and this comes with a tool to press them in. So what we'll do is we'll figure out what drill bit is required for this and we will drill all the holes out on this and then we will press the eyelets in. So these are two piece eyelets, there's a top and a bottom. So you drill the hole, you sandwich it in and then you press them in. Perfect fit. Okay, let's do them all now.
make sure that seats in there nicely and then get the tool push the tool right in the middle there and there we go So we got the chassis almost all together here. I got the back and the top and then the front. One thing I should mention, um, when you're mounting the transformers, make sure you have some grommets in here because you don't want the wires going through the sharp edges. And then I have the underside here and I mounted some standoffs here and that's where the eyelet board is going to mount right onto those standoffs. So that's good. So let's go ahead and mount the transformers. We got everything fastened and ready to go here. Everything looks fantastic. So what we're gonna do now is wire up all the leads that are here. So we'll wire the mains, we'll wire the heater circuit in, we'll wire the output transformer in on the primary and the secondary side. And then once that's all wired up, we will go ahead and populate the eyelet board. We will place the eyelet board in and then we'll do all the, the rest of the wiring. It's come together really nice. I got the dials on. Got the tubes in, Put it over here. So you got the other switch in the back here. That's all good. And now all we have to do now is the wiring. Well, I'm really happy the way this is turning out so far. It looks awesome. So what's left to do is populate the eyelet board, do all the internal wiring, um, do the voltage check, and then do the sound check. So that'll be coming up in the next video. As I mentioned, I'll be doing a full build document. So I'll have the layout, the schematic, and the parts list listed below once this is all finalized. And I'd appreciate if you hit the like button and also hit the bell icon so you're notified when the next video comes out. So I hope this inspires you to build something similar. Once again, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.